I wanted to share a quick word on behavior change. Behavior change. This is one of the key reasons I pulled mindset coaching into my health coaching. <laughs> what I find so often, and like literally I feel like this is what people ask me for, is they want to just change behavior by just changing behavior and that's it. Like I just, you give me a, a new life plan and I'm just going to like do it and I'm going to brute force myself into just changing these behaviors, changing these behaviors. And I'm giggling, you see me giggling because behavior is a result of the stories that we hold about life and our mental and emotional patterns that are patterns just like the Pavlov effect with Pavlov's dogs. So for example, here's, a, here's an example. If you have road rage or you get real annoyed, every time you get behind the wheel, you mad, 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 mad. There's a mental, emotional pattern. There are stories that are being created by triggers that have come on lock for you. It's if somebody does anything wrong on the road, anything wrong, it is a personal offense to you. So why, do you, why does the behavior of saying, you know, swear words and getting angry and all of that, why does that behavior happen? Because of the stories that are happening on a, as an auto response of so many years of if somebody cuts me off or changes lanes right in front of me, it's because they are doing something to me somehow. And it's not until we take a deeper look at the stories that we hold about the triggers in our lives and everything happening in our lives that our behavior can change more easily. That is why I'm giggling because trying to just brute force behavior change without looking at the mental and emotional patterns that we have, the stories that we're creating out of triggers. If we don't do that, you're not gonna get there. It would be similar to like, okay, if you guys saw something metal that was blazing hot red, what would your story be about the metal that's blazing red? Your story would be, that's hot and that can burn me, correct? Okay, so what if somebody's like, touch it, touch it, touch it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not touching it, right? But you've got this coach and they're like, touch it, touch it, touch it. That's seriously how it is when we have these undealt with stories in certain areas of our lives and we're just trying to straight brute force behavior change without looking at any of the stories. See what I mean? Why do I go to the gym in the morning? Because of the stories that I hold about the gym. Why do I, when I travel, no matter what freaking time my event starts, even when I was running my own retreat, why did I get up super early and drive 30 minutes away to a gym every morning? Because of the stories that I hold. My story is that gives me time to tap in. That gives me energy all day long. That is the funnest part of my day. I can't wait to go do that. I want that for myself. I want that time for myself. But what if my story was, oh, gotta go work out. I should go work out. I don't feel like working out. It's gonna suck. It's gonna be such a nuisance. I don't feel like it. Mm. What do you think is gonna happen? Not go. I'm not gonna go if those are all my stories. And so if you want to change behavior, the, the, the most effective and truly only way to do it is to change the stories that we have about things. I hired a mindset coach for a little while. His name's Jared Hanning. Um, I was in the process of writing my level up program. Okay. It's a training nutrition mindset program that goes for a year. It's a lot of work when you sit behind a freaking blank word document and you're like, I got to create this system that goes for a year and be creative and cool and good information in training and nutrition and mindset, right? Not to mention write the nutrition plans, write the training plans, like all this stuff, right? And so that was what I was working on with him at the time. I was like, yeah, I'm definitely feeling resistance on writing this level up program. So you know what we did? You know what his method was? All we did was work on the limiting stories. What are the stories that are going on in my un unconscious, subconscious mind causing me to not do this thing? So we listed them out. It was like, it's gonna take forever. I don't know how to do it. This is gonna be hard. What if it's not good? All of these things, and you know all we did? 
we, we worked on it together until I created direct flips for each of those stories that got me wanting to do it. So the, this is going to take forever. That was a big thing. Okay. That one I switched it to, I love getting started. I love starting new things. And so every time I feel that, I don't feel like doing it, it's going to take forever. I love starting new things. I love getting started. I love, you know, um, what if it's not good? I can't wait to share all this goodness. I can't wait to share all this. I can't wait to share. Can't wait to share. Can't wait to share. And I just repatterned the stories about the thing. And guess what I'm done with now? My 12 month level up program. And I've done this with clients too. And it's very effective. Huge props to Catherine Dixon who utilizes heavily the work of Byron Katie and her work for changing my whole goddamn life from this stories. I was in a big ass victim story after a really toxic relationship. He admitted to lying and manipulated and using me. Okay. Admitted it, admitted it to me and publicly. <laughs> so I was in my big ass victim story. I got manipulated and used and all this. Stuff. You know what Catherine Dixon helped me do? Changed my freaking story about that whole thing. And guess this little miss, guess who has a big ass, huge feeling of gratitude for that whole period of my life? Truly, deeply. I can see all the goodness because my story about it changed. <laughs> and guess what? My patterns have been in, in new relationships. Much healthier, right? Because I took a look at my story. So, relating this back to health and nutrition, because I know a lot of you guys are here for that. If you're not consistently eating well, what are the stories that you have about eating healthy food? Write them down. What are your stories? I have to eat this. This doesn't taste good. I don't like this. You're not going to do it. If those are your stories. Okay, you keep binging on junk food. What's your stories about the junk food? These are so freaking good. I love these. I want these. I only want these. Oh my gosh. But, okay, well, maybe take a look at some new stories. Like, those are really hard for my body to deal with. I don't know how much I want to make my body deal with those things. I don't like the way I feel when I eat like this all the time. Like, those things cause me to feel crappy and detract from my way of life. New story. What about the gym? very, very common one for people who don't have any consistent gym practice is I don't know what I'm doing. I don't like it in there. It's embarrassing to go in there. I'm going to be so sore. That's a huge one. I see that one so much. So literally the story is that if I go do that thing, it's going to create pain in my life. Good luck with that. You're never going to be consistent with something that your story about it is that it makes your life worse. <laughs> I don't do cocaine and heroin because I perceive that they would make my life worse. <laughs> Not even tempted, right? So if that's you with the gym, look at your stories. Identify the stories. Literally write them down. What are the stories that are keeping me from doing that thing that I actually do feel like would be good for my life? And start creating flips and work with those flips until they resonate with you. Maybe I like being a little sore. That means I got some freaking work done. Mm. Yeah, let's go. Right? Or maybe I love seeing what my body is capable of. Wow. Stories. You want behavior change. Look at your stories. And and I find like we are so big on the outside, right? We're so big on visible change, visible pattern changing. We are not big on what's going on privately in our own minds and those mental emotional patterns. Maybe you a guy and you got a mental emotional pattern that every time you see a pretty chick, your mind wanders for weeks, days into all these fantasy shit. And what is that bringing into your life? Do you like that? Because if not, you may need some behavior change that starts here with the stories that you're telling yourself. Maybe, I'll pick on women now. Maybe you're a woman and every time somebody says one little suggestion to you, you take it personally like they don't think you're good enough or they don't like you or they're criticizing you. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe they're just communicating something. But if you don't have 
the practice of being able to harness, take control of the, your own mental, emotional patterns and where you let them go. And it's just a freaking <laughs> crazy, untamed nightmare going on in your mental, emotional patterns. It's going to take you down some places you don't want to go. So that's a lot of the work I do. I will say I feel that I have done a good job of changing a lot of shit in my life. A lot. My whole damn life. <laughs> and I'm constantly tending to this like a garden. It's like, that's interesting. You're all like, you're going down that whole pattern with that thing. What is that? What is that? Mm. Does that feel high frequency to you? All right, let's take a look. What's going on? What's the stories? Let's look at it with love and compassion. But it all starts here. You want to change your life. It all starts here. I'm going to go here. It's not just here. It's here, here, and here. That's my gut I'm pointing to. It's ridiculous to want to only change our lives through brute force of behavior change. We got to look inside. That's why my higher logo is the way it is. It's like going up a mountain and nope, you go back inside and you soar higher than any freaking mountain like an eagle. It's all here. So, you know, closing this up, I'll share if there's, if there's a result you're getting in your life. What's up, Don Moxley? I was just recommending spermity in life to a client like half an hour ago. Um, so, um, if there's things happening in your life, like you're noticing on the outside that you're get you're doing things that you're just not really liking how that's rolling. Go back inside and examine what are the stories that I have? <sighs> and what other stories could be true that will bring me closer to actually wanting those aspects of my life on the regular and letting go of things that I don't want on the regular? What are the stories? That's how behavior change just happens. Yeah. If you want to go deeper on this, hit up Clarity Coaching Institute, work with Byron Katie, read Loving What Is, and meditate. Meditate your ass off because meditation increases the space between stimulus and response. I love, I've got a client right now, she's like, I can't believe this. This is freaking crazy. She is for the first time in her life, experiencing being the observer of her life instead of just stuck in the show and the drama. She's like, oh, wow, I can, uh, I can watch myself and, and life and like observe this whole thing. That is what Viktor Frankl was talking about in Man's Search for Meaning between stimulus and response. There's a space. And that's where all your freedom and power lies. Meditate. Meditate often. And don't get caught. When you, get, when you find yourself caught up in thoughts, it's fine. It's going to happen every freaking time, okay? It's just let it go and come back into that. To me, it's like right here in my third eye. It's just like that's where I like commune with the divine. And when I do that, when I come out of that, because I do it every morning, when I come out of that, I'm able to more be this observer of my life. And if you want to be able to change your patterns and even your mental, emotional patterns, you got to be the, the, the observer of your mental and emotional patterns. And then all of your physical patterns that manifest in your life, they change much more easily. So that's all. Okay. Much love, guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye.